As researchers, it's important that we know how to talk to people about our research. That's why Baylor College of Medicine has made these buttons available. Just pick one up, put it on, and let's start a conversation. And that's also why I'm here with my friend, Elizabeth, um, to show how friendly it can be to just talk about your research. What kind of research do you do? Ah, have you seen a brain before? Do you know what it is? Ah, what is it? It helps us to learn things. Yeah, exactly. That's how we like go to school and we get to learn all those fun things and do math and um, write those beautiful little stories, right, that we're doing. So the brain is like really important for that. But, you know, it's so complex, we really don't know how it works. And so my research studies how that brain grows, how we learn, how we understand the world around us. And for some kiddos, sometimes it just doesn't work quite the way it should. And so then they take a little bit longer to learn all those fun things that you're doing in school right now. So what we wanna do is we wanna understand how that happens. How do we make this brain work really well? And what can we do to make it work better so that we can help a little kiddo be just as great with their math and their art and their stories as you are. Why did you decide to research that? Uh, actually, the reason I started doing that is because my mother is a teacher specifically taught kiddos who would take a little bit longer to really master reading and writing and math. I got to spend a lot of time with those kiddos when I was growing up, and I realized that there was a lot of answers that we still needed to get for them, like why and how can we make it better. What do you do when you see children? Um, sometimes they're there because they're hoping I can help them get some answers. So the first thing that I'll do is try to get their story from the very beginning. And so usually mom and dad helps with that. And then they'll chime in and they'll tell me how things are going in school, what are they doing at home, and what are they not able to do. And then once I have that information, the next thing I do is I, I look at their genes. And have you heard about what they are? Like, do you think they're genes that we wear? No. They are little sentences that help describe parts of who we are. And there's genes that also tell us about how our brain grows. And so one of the things I do when I meet the little kiddos after I get their story is I try to figure out how do their genes look like? And is there something there that might tell me what's going on? Where do you get genes from? So genes um, come from mom and dad. Half of our genes come from mom, our other half come from dad, and they come together and they make a book. And the book is called Elizabeth. And if you read through the book, it's got all these little stories and all these little pieces that tell us that Elizabeth loves flowers. Elizabeth has uh, lovely hazel eyes, long brown hair, and it kind of just describes all about you, all about how you're gonna become. And um, it's really important because we need every piece in that book to be in there correctly. Do you like reading books? Ah. I read every single night. You do? What are you reading right now? Nancy Drew. Oh, <laughs> I grew up with Nancy Drew. That's fun. Do you see yourself as like an investigator solving mysteries? Yeah. So that's a little bit about what we do too. We kind of feel like we're being part of Nancy Drew's team. We've got this mystery and we're going to have to find all the clues and try to find that answer for it. And some of the clues sit in the genes. And so what we have to do is we have to get the book and look at the pieces and then put our thinking hats on and play detective, actually be detective, and try to get those answers. <laughs>